So just finding a nice comfortable seat and sit back in space. Whether you have a support behind you or not, just really sink back into your back body. And notice how that feels to relax your back muscles. Roll your shoulders back to open up your heart space. And just move your torso side to side to feel that gentle little wave, flexibility and fluidity. Perhaps bring that circulation, undulation into your head, neck and shoulders. And depending on what time of the day it is for you, just tuning in to how the body feels. Perhaps you feel tired, alive, excited, awake, sleepy. And just begin to slowly spiral yourself back to your center, back to your stillness. And just allowing your eyelids to close, your shoulders to relax. And feeling your bum sink down into the surface beneath you. And let's take a deep inhalation through the nose, fill up the belly, fill up the chest. And with an open out, melt exhale. And again, deep inhalation in. And a big breath out. And one last time. And exhale completely. And just let go of the breath. Let go of the breath and just feel the breath gently entering and leaving the body. And with each exhale, let go a little bit more into your body, into this space, into the energy of this new moon in Cancer. I'm feeling now your energetic roots traveling all the way down to Mother Earth, all the way down to the very core of Gaia, Pachamama, the great primordial mother. And as you connect in with her core, her center, feel this gentle little pull or talk. And during these moon phases, it's so important that we ground, that we connect deeply. So take a moment to feel that connection. And as you inhale, receive Mother Earth's grounded, loving, nurturing energy. And as you let, exhale, let go of anything that's not serving you, emotions, responsibilities, situations. Inhaling, receiving these new earth codes, frequencies. And exhale, let go of any heaviness, any burdens, any excess energy. And just continue with this exchange of energy, receiving and letting go opening the channels, opening the pathways. When a gentle smile on your face and love in your heart, sending gratitude and thanks to Mother Earth for supporting you today and every day. And now bring in your awareness all the way to the top of your head, your crown, and just tune in here. It's okay if it's busy. It's the mind's job to think. But just allow all of that thinking to move to the back. So as you focus between your eyebrows, feel this stillness, this centeredness, this calmness. 
and see, feel, or just simply imagine your crown chakra opening now like a thousand petal lotus. And as it comes into full bloom, feel this expansion. And from the very center of your crown emerges your silver thread. And it begins to ascend upward through the roof, the sky, clouds, the Earth's atmosphere, and all the way up into the cosmos. All the way up into that big ball of white light, which we call Source, Great Spirit, God, Higher Power, whatever it is that you believe in. That which is much greater than us. That which is of the highest good and the highest good only. And as we connect in with this infinite source of energy, light and healing, feeling yourself lengthening. And this energy begins to pour like a white healing waterfall down your silver thread. Into the crown of your head, third eye, throat, heart space solar plexus, womb, root, and all the way down into your roots, into the earth. So seeing yourself now as this pillar of light, a bridge between heaven and earth, and your feet begin to fill with this white healing light, legs, hips, torso, arms and hands, neck and head. Your whole entire body and being filled with this beautiful white healing light, blessing every cell, tissue, muscle, organ and bone. And it emanates out through the surface of your skin into your auric field, cleansing and purifying the energy all around you now. And it takes the form of an egg-like shape. It's a silver layer of protection all around, protecting you from all harm, just allowing the good stuff in. You are grounded, protected and connected. You always were and you always will be. Just notice how that feels. And see a big, beautiful ring of light surrounding us all now, creating safe and sacred space. Very slowly and gently, bring your awareness back to your physical body. And begin to deepen your breath a little bit. And on your next inhalation, sweep your hands out to the side. Take a great big stretch all the way up. And exhale, bring your hands down through center. Placing your thumbs into your sternum, bowing your head to your hands, and set an intention for this new moon, this ritual, this day. Whatever it is, set it for yourself now by taking a deep breath in and exhale. Gently open up your eyelids. So we have arrived on the day, Friday, um, what day is it? The 5th of July, um, and the new moon peaks tonight, just before midnight. And normally new moons, you feel the effects the day of and a couple of days after, but this week has been emotional turmoil for many. Me, my students, my friends, lots of people feeling that kind of stir. And we often think of emotions as good and bad, but they're very neutral. It is just how we perceive them is how they are. So when we're feeling sad or angry or frustrated or um, any of those emotions, we think they're bad because society has told us not to show those emotions, to suppress them. So when the moon is either new or full, it amplifies those emotions which have been suppressed. So think of a child, when they're angry, they express the anger. When they're sad, they express the sadness. When they're happy, they express the happiness. So really the message here is honor your emotions because they are your navigation system of how you are in that moment, how life is internally and externally. 
Um, and when we give them the light and the space and the attention that they deserve, they dissipate. And then we return back to neutrality or that baseline. But so many people don't know what their baseline is. They're either high, high or low, low, and they can't seem to find the balance in between. Because having expectations to be happy all of the time is really toxic and it's really unattainable. So, you know, that's why I always say every time we have these sessions or we meet each other, it's like, how am I feeling? Tune in and really ask, how am I feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling. Let's get rid of the okays or goods or fines because they're, you know, don't really show us anything. So, yeah, I'm feeling a bit tender. I'm feeling a bit vulnerable. I'm feeling uh, sensual. I'm feeling ecstatic. I'm feeling alive. Like, they are just really narrowing down and focusing on the truth. And the more we honor that, the more we can navigate situations through our emotions and become very, very emotional and intelligent. Um, and this will help us to trust ourselves more when we are honoring our emotions. Um, because again, we've been um, programmed to uh, distrust or not to trust our emotional intelligence and go against it. So with this new moon, it's in the sign of cancer. So it's the water element. It's also connected to our digestion. So think about when you have a gut feeling. So if you have a strong connection to your uh, digestion, you will be able to pick up on things like, oh, that's that doesn't feel right. So you often override that and go against it because that person has a certificate or someone else has recommended it. Or do you say, no, I'm going to sit back on this now for a little bit and just see feelingly, as Shakespeare would say. So just because somebody says or advertises something uh, or you're given a recommendation, always trust your instincts because your energetical match will be very different to somebody else's. So this is about being in touch with your feminine energy rather than your masculine logic. So we're coming, taking the journey from the head to the heart all the way down into the feeling center in the womb space. Um, and when we go against our emotions and our instincts, uh, we're really dishonoring ourselves. So what happens then is we become disconnected or disassociated and those signals become very weak and very muddled. And then we don't know what's what. And then we begin to outsource our power to other people, to relationships to society um, and then you know we become very disempowered basically so when we have a new moon it's a great opportunity to start something new so planting those seeds and um, to get really focused on this is what I want and this is where I need to go so that takes time and this week the big big word that has been coming up is patience so you plant a seed and then you know that it will grow over time. You're not looking at every day going, where is the sprouts? Why isn't it coming through the soil? It takes time. <laughs> so I'm sure there's very impatient people listening to this or watching this. So it's like, okay, everything takes time. But what I can do during that time of growth and gestation and all of that is I can begin to nurture myself. I can begin to tune into my impatience and see what I can focus on rather than focusing on what I don't have or what I'm waiting on. I can focus on my fitness, my nutrition, my positive thinking, my journaling, my meditation. So instead of focusing on the lack or where you are not yet, or what you think you should be doing, focus in on what you can control and improve in this moment. And something else that came up uh, this week as well is when I have too much time or too much space, everything gets very, very broad and I get a bit disorientated. I don't know if anyone else is like that. They, when they work better under pressure, so for me, it was like, embrace the space. You do not always have to fill time. So allow yourself to just expand into that space. Because when we expand into that space, we connect with something that's much greater than us. 
when we're under pressure, what happens is we're really, really laser focused. And then we kind of miss out on the subtle things or the nuances. So when you are in that space of boredom, which is really, really important place to be every now and again, um, that gives us an opportunity to feel into things that maybe we haven't noticed before. So for me, it was the uh, impatience. It's like, oh, you know, I just want to be here. or I just want to be in Glastonbury or I just want this to happen right now. And it's like, OK, you know, everything has its time and place. So just be patient enjoy the expansion enjoy the space that's here because when you're busy you want more time and you know if you have straight hair you want curly hair so it's always thinking that the grass is always greener on the other side or wanting something uh, that you don't have so when we come back to presence what is in our um reality this moment um, it begins to build gratitude. And that's the third thing that came up this week. It's an attitude of gratitude because we always want like the car, the house, the job, the relationship. So again, that's going into lack mentality, the wanting or needing of something that you don't have already. So dream, want, desire, manifest, absolutely. But after you've stated what you want, come back to gratitude, come back to like, wow, I, I'm so blessed to have everything that I have in my life, my health, um, the roof over my head, the food in my fridge. We all have at least 10 things that we can think of straight away that we are super grateful for. So when we do that, we come back to the present moment and then the universe is like, okay, I'll give her more of that. Uh, instead of thinking, oh, I can't wait for X, Y, and Z, or I'll be happy when. Um, so it's really just about sitting with yourself, sitting with whatever is alive and present rather than projecting out into the future or thinking about the past. So it is a practice to consistently be present, but that's where true happiness and joy exists in this now moment, because you will never have this now moment ever again. So it's like, OK, how can I make the most of what I have? Um, so I'm wondering if that's resonating, if anyone would like to share how their couple of days has been up to this point, um, more than welcome to share. So I have some very exciting new cards that I was like, oh, I can't wait to <clears throat> tune into these. Um, and they are the daily guidance from your angels. Uh, and they're very, very sweet cards with um, beautiful messages. So let's see what is needed to know right now and for the next two weeks. So if you have any questions in your heart or anything you would like clarity on, just take a moment to send your energy into the cards. Open your heart, take a deep breath in. Exhale. Okay. Oh, wow. Lots of guidance. So the first one is energy work. Life can be electrifying because its very essence is energy. Your body is a remarkable energy field that will positively respond to loving treatments. Your hands and heart are activated to give healing energy to your loved ones and to your clients. So this is really interesting because, again, this is what I was saying about outsourcing your power. We are all healers. And when you go for a healing session, that person is not healing you. They are just simply creating and facilitating the space in which you can heal yourself because your body is so intelligent and your body wants to be well, but we have to give it the right environment and the space to do so. So this is tuning into what I was saying about enjoying the space. 
when life becomes boring, that's giving you an opportunity to rest more. So energy healing could be just simply placing your hands in your heart or your body and just sending loving energy to yourself. It could be going for a treatment. It could be staying out in nature or going to the beach or something like that. But so much of our energy is going out. We really need to replenish our energy back in or else we go into the reserves or into the red. So for me, this week, the space and the boredom was there because the next couple of weeks are going to be super busy. So it's like, yes, take the rest, do the inner work, replenish yourself so that you can be sustained for the next couple of weeks. The next one then is have confidence. Moving forward does not necessarily require you to have confidence in yourself. Confidence in God is enough, along with knowing that God works through you and with you in all ways. Lean upon us in your confidence waivers and we will uh, buoy your courage and faith. So you can only gain confidence through experience. So I spoke about this yesterday. Um, it's you have to put yourself outside of your comfort zone and try something new. And there is a huge amount of discomfort in it. But then it becomes like brushing your teeth. Then you gain experience, knowledge, and then it is ingrained within you. But if you don't try, if you don't put yourself out there, um, you're never going to gain confidence. And then you're just repeating the same cycles. There's no evolution. There's no growth. And life becomes very, very mundane and stagnant. Um, so allow yourself to have the beginner's mindset. Allow yourself to be okay with the messiness and just know that with consistency and time, you will have the confidence that you are longing for. The next one then is release and surrender. We shower you with blessings of our radiant love. Open your arms and release the challenges that you've held tightly gripped within your hands. Open your hands, arms and hearts to love and assistance. So this is a super powerful card. Just look at those colors. And surrender is a huge thing. Um, as well it's all about really letting go really knowing that you are supported and the universe does have your back and that it is okay to expand and open um and when we have our hands open they are open and receptive but when we're like this you know we're really just closing ourselves off and we're constantly in fear and nothing nothing can get in so it's knowing that there's a bigger vision and having that opening up is helping you to radiate your energy so that you can become a vibrational match for whatever it is that you desire. The next one then is blessing in disguise. What appears to be a problem is actually part of your answered prayer. You'll understand the reason behind your present situation as everything resolves. Trust in heaven's protection and infinite wisdom to answer your prayer in the best way. So there seems to be a lot um, of needing to trust and continuously move forward because what happens is when we're in a fear state, we become paralyzed, paralyzed and we don't take any action. Every day we have to show up and take action because it's all about the law of cause and effect. So if you keep doing the same things, every day you're going to keep getting the same results but if you want your life to be different if you want your dreams to come through you have to begin to meet your dreams and desires by taking actionable steps towards us and um, so you know when you don't get certain things it can be like oh that's really disappointing or i'm really sad about that but think of it as blessing that if you didn't get that there must be something greater awaiting for you and then lastly, change in direction. The changes you are experiencing are divinely directed by your newborn willingness to open your heart to love and our guidance. You are protected now and in the future, so follow your path to the happy outcome you desire. So look at the stalk delivering the new baby. So 
birth is not just about delivering a human being. It's about birthing a new version of yourself. We are six months into the year. So what do you want to birth over the next six months? What do you want to create? Uh, who do you want to become? Because you have a whole other half of the year to create something magical. And I always say, you know, people say to me, oh, I manifested this and that and the other thing. And they are like, I don't know how it happened. So if you really focused your mind and your energy, imagine what you could create if you were a conscious creator. And how we manifest is through the heart. Yes, you can have the vision, but you have to bring it out into your heart to be like, I am so worthy of receiving and really tune into the feeling of how it would be if that was your reality and really begin to embrace that feeling and that sensation. Mm. So very, very interesting um, positive cards, lots of change. And with change, we have to trust. And if we want something, we have to be open to receive it. So that's what I feel the, the common uh, theme is between those cards. So again, if that is resonating, you can let me know or if you have any questions or sharings. I'm just going to do a very gentle little sage cleanse. It's like I said, there's been a lot of heightened emotions this week, a lot of stuff coming to the surface. So this is what today's ritual is about, bringing to light, bringing out of the darkness, whatever is lingering there, bring it into the light, bring it to the surface so it can be transmuted. So just invite in the sage energy and consciousness to clear, cleanse, bless and protect whatever feels heavy, dense, to bring more light, awareness and love to whatever is present there. Whatever feels stuck or stagnant is now being released and sent back to source. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So for our practice today, we're going to do a very slow, gentle flow. Um, Cancer energy is related to our digestive system. So we're going to be really gentle with our digestive system um, really helping things to move. Cancer is also related to the water element. So that feminine energy, that flow um, and really being flexible in our body as well. So we're going to move like water. We're going to connect with our and open our digestive systems. Um, and we're going to be very, very gentle. So whenever you're ready, you can pop onto your mats. Mm -hmm. 